I um, first got involved here in 1997 and we come most every year, a couple times we came twice. We, um, we have a lot of people who talk about wanting to come to Haiti on a mission team, but when it comes to the point of making a decision, they sort of back off. They go and read about it on the internet and they find out, hey, that's a little bit tough over there. And they're right, it is a little tough over here. In fact, it's a whole lot tough. Um, we travel from Tampa to Miami and from Miami to Port-au-Prince and once we land in Port-au-Prince then we have to get from the main airport to the little airport. Um, we take little Cessna planes from Port-au-Prince to Pinyang and then which takes about a half an hour flight and then we drive about two hours in trucks to get to Mombin. So that kind of tells you it's a remote region. Yeah, because so. Sylvia, because you want to be last on the truck. <laughs> I'm going to go in the truck. We take nurses for the medical clinic. Did you take medicine for Dulé? I'll have to check. I don't know how to say that. We're taking medical doctors. You have to like goat if you want to come here. Goat is our main source of meat. Fortunately, I am one who likes goat. We take, um, we're taking a dentist. Oh my god, you did fabulous. You might be a little sore later. Good job. So Ron, how many teeth did you just remove? Five. Five on the top and then one on the bottom. We're taking an OR team. taking other people that can help. And we also have a young lady here who has a master's in public health and she's she is now teaching them about the moringa tree. And um, uh, Pastor John is there and he's utilized in many different ways. One is that every every morning um, a team that goes uh, engages in, in devotion and prayer together. Then once we finish the devotional and have breakfast, then we head off. Um, Dr. Gale goes to the medical clinics and starts doing those all day. Sees hundreds of people. We work in a little clinic. Um, it was actually built by the World Health Organization in the 80s that then was abandoned. Uh, it's hot, it's noisy, it's, it's very chaotic, but it's organized. Much better now than it used to be. This is a challenge coming over here. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, as you do it over and over and over, it, it becomes a little less stressful because I, I now work with a team that has six core members that have been here most every trip that I've made. And we can arrive on a Friday night and by Saturday noon, we're set up and ready to go to work. In fact, our operating room will be seeing patients on Saturday afternoon. And so we're, we've learned how to do it. It's interesting to operate in the hospital. And actually, there's a nice operating table, except it doesn't work right. And an anesthesia machine that was broken when it got there. Amazing contrast to the way we operate here. But you learn how to do that. You learn how to just, this is what we have, this is what we're going to do. We're going to make it happen. Um, we've had to do cases that we were very nervous about doing because we didn't have the backup that we're used to. But you have to think about the fact that if you don't do them, this person's probably going to die. But then you don't want to do something that will leave somebody worse than before you came. So you have to kind of balance that. We see many patients here who cannot afford to go to a hospital. And in the hospitals in Haiti, if you go there as a patient, one of the first questions they are going to ask you is just like in the States, how about money? Now they don't have insurance here, and unfortunately they don't have a lot of money. So if you go to a hospital and they want money and you don't have it, they're going to send you home. The majority of patients are very, very thin and um, hardly any body fat. I, I, I'm often told by families that some of the kids don't have enough food, and I believe that when I see them because there is there are certain signs of malnutrition. 
Um, they are very resilient people. All, as far as every place I've gone in the world, I would believe that the Haitians are the most resilient people on the earth. And they endure their hardships. I'm oh, sorry. They are just a really tough people. And they continue to have their faith despite their hardships. The first time I went, it was very difficult. It's, it was very difficult on, on many levels because it was very difficult to try to understand how people could be in a situation like that, that to me seemed so absolutely hopeless. And yet there was joy and happiness and laughter and beauty. I can't fix problems in Haiti. But I can help one person, and then I can help another person, and another person, and they can help someone, and you never know how this is going to grow, and that's all you really can do. Actually, in the beginning of VPI's trips, there was a young boy that fell in a vat of boiling water. But through a series of events, they were able to get a chopper to land in Mombin, taken to Tampa General, um, brought back to health, then a couple months later brought back to Mombin. But through that, his brother, who was a teenager at the time, actually um, was inspired to become a physician. So, at this time, um, a junior husband, uh, his name is Al Grace, decided to support me with school. Who I am today, it's, bec it's because of Al. Because my mom, my mother worked very hard, but she could never help me to be a doctor. But with our support, I am a doctor today. It's a good blessing and amazing. So, I mean, that is an amazing story how this team has gone there for years and now they're seeing like change one life at a time. And what we do may seem like a drop in the bucket, but at least what we're doing is some level of improvement. We are, I think we're, we are dedicated to continuing to do this type of work because of the need, for one thing. There is a tremendous need. One of the things that I've found is that if you give people a mechanism to help others, they want to help others. People innately want to help other people. So many people help. I know collecting medical and surgical supplies, the nurses in the hospital work all year long. Uh, especially St. Joe's and, and all children's in St. Petersburg save supplies for us. So when I'm on my way to the hospital, I'll take two bags. They've got two bags and I'll pick up their two bags and leave my two bags. And the people in my church are, every year they know that the eyeglasses are going to be collected for Haiti. And, and so it's really a fun thing. I have people come up and give me glasses all year long. When are you going to Haiti? Here's some glasses. And they're the, they're the unsung heroines and heroes. You know, they're the ones that maybe don't get the recognition of being the ones to fly in the airplane and land in Pignon. But they're the reason we're able to do it. With this team, it's a, a very big blessing for people in Mumbai because their health condition is improved a little bit. And I think they are very special for people in Mumbai. They are helped so much. Mm -hmm. And one more time, thank you to you, thank you to VPI, and I say to other in Hamika who would like to come, Haiti, welcome.